mask. This thing pinches my bridge nose, nose of my bridge. Hi guys, Freddie here from uh, Black Cat Cosplay or Cat's Meow Cosplay, whatever you want to call it. We're going to rebrand later, but anyway, uh, I am here to show you guys how I'm going to make my Lady Noir mask, and it's actually how I made my Black Cat mask as well, and it's a very, very useful way to make masks. So um, to start out, um, I'll probably have a list of supplies that you'll need down in the description below wherever I have this up. Uh, but currently we are going to be making a pattern because you need a pattern or else it like it won't fit the curves of your face that well. So what you're going to need to do that is you're going to need a variety of mirrors. I have this one and then I have a giant standing one in front of me that y'all cannot see. You'll want some tracing paper of some sort. You can use um, drafting paper. You can use just regular tracing paper like I have here. You can use gridded paper. Anything basically that you can make see-through. Yeah, right. Uh, and then you will want some eyeliner. Just some regular eyeliner. I recommend going to the drugstore and picking up cheap ones. I'm actually using um, Sex Kitten by Tarte, which is really expensive, but I don't have cheaper eyeliner. Oh well. Uh, you will also want some reference images, which I am going to pull up now for myself. There we go. Alright, so I have my reference images. Very nice. I have three of them. One's of the full body suit, one's of the doll of her that came out, and then one is actually of a cat noir mask. Um, which for those of you who know about the series, Cat Noir is the suit, it's like a Lady Noir is a femme version of the Cat Noir suit, so they're very similar. But yes, with my reference images, uh, I can go ahead and get a generalized idea, and this mask is going to take up a lot of my face, like it goes down to her nose too. So I am going to go ahead and get started. I got my handy dandy Jeffree Star mirror. And I'm going to go ahead and just, so what I normally do is I only do half of my face because this crap gets in your pores and it's really, really hard to get out. So I'm just going to kind of do my best impression of a straight line here. Try and kind of get down the middle of my nose. And it goes pretty high in between her eyebrows. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. And right there. Okay, so this is gonna be the very middle of my mask. So her mask has this triangle portion over her nose. So kind of like that. That's kind of her nose shape. This part goes up. It looks okay. I ain't hating on it. Alrighty, so I think that makes a pretty good mask shape. And now we have to do in the area around the eyes which is going to suck, wrong finger. Which is going to suck because it covers a lot of her eyes. So I'm going to have to get very, very close. <laughs> so we're going to put more eyeliner in the stick. The problem with doing stuff around your eye is that the skin likes to fold in on itself so if you watch it's like uh, you can't really there you go like yeah so it makes it very hard to get a straight line but I think as long 
as I can true it up on the pattern, I'll be okay. So I'm hoping, I don't know how well it's gonna go, I look ridiculous, but as long as I can not burn my eyelid off, I'm hoping that this will work with the Warpla. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. I think I have enough space in between the Warpla and my eye. So I'm gonna go with it. So now all we're gonna do is basically color in the lines. Uh-huh, I need more eyeliner. If you do have to do this, like, and immediately go back out, um, get a soft bristled toothbrush and an exfoliator and some rubbing alcohol, and that should help get it off. I also recommend um, Pond's Cold Cream Makeup Remover because that stuff is amazing and it gets off almost any sort of makeup, be it um, face paint or waterproof makeup, any oil-based makeup, that stuff is amazing. I swear by it. It's a theater trick I picked up while I was in college. And there we go. And you can just kind of go through and if you see any like spots that need touched up, go ahead and put some more on that. You can't ever have too much eyeliner on your face for this stuff. Look at that, that's all eyeliner. That's nuts, I look ridiculous. Okay, so now that that is done, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your crinkly ass tissue paper or um, drafting paper, tracing paper, whatever the hell you want to call it. You're going to cut yourself off a square, a decent sized square that'll fit your face. And then I'm going to need the big mirror for this, so I'm going to scooch you all a little bit so y'all can see. So you're going to have to just literally press your face into it, okay? And just kind of like walk the pattern out. Like so. And there you have a decent sized imprint of your thing. Okay. So, I do not have any Sharpies over here, and I really want to get this stuff off of my face, so I am going to get this makeup off, and I'm going to take a shower and try and clean my pores, mu pores as much as possible, and then I am going to get in my comfy PJs, and then we are going to go back, come, and then we are going to come back We are going to come back and I can show you how to turn that splotchy impressionist art project into a template for masks, okay? All right, BRB my friends. So we are back in action after a nice shower and mostly clean pores and also after binging Pose on Netflix. Uh, I apologize for the very weird camera angle. Um, I am doing this all on the floor, so I don't really have a nice setup to where I can put you guys overhead. So I'm kind of working underneath, really James, working underneath the camera stand currently. So it's very strange. Um, but anyway, James is playing with his ball. Y'all can't see it, which is a shame, but he's cute. Anyway, so we have our 
half mask design right here. Okay, so this is our nose piece. Okay, this is our nose piece. And then this is our eye shape. So what we're going to do now is we are going to true these shapes up after my nose stops itching. So this is where the point is. And it's gonna go like this. And we're basically just doing our best to make it as uniform and as straight as possible. Well, it's a bunch of curves, so it's technically not straight, but I guess y'all know what I mean. It doesn't matter if you get anything on the inside, because that's just gonna be negative space. What matters is you get the shape you want on the outside. So there we have our basic eye shape. And I always like to do some outlining on the original because as you can see, a lot of the transferring isn't 100% and it makes it easier to do what I am going to do, which is to get a whole nother square of this paper and you want it to be bigger this time so that you can get two halves of the same mask on it. So that's that's gonna be cutting it close, I think. Yeah, I think that's gonna cut it close, like really, really close. But we shall work with what we got, hunty. Work with what you got. Maybe if we do it that way? Yeah, we'll do it that way, all right. So lay it on over top. Um, if you want to stick something on there to keep it, down, go ahead. Various ways, are we in frame? We are not in frame. I apologize immensely for this, y'all. One of these days I will have a very decent setup. Today is not that day. We work with what we are given, children. All right, so we're gonna go in with a another color. This time it's gonna be black. And we are just going to do a tracing of the green lines. So, now we have a clean copy of our design. And since we want this to be a mirror image, what we're actually going to do is we are going to fold it on the very, very edge, or as close as we can possibly get. And we are actually going to trace it on the other side, like so. As soon as I can get the points lined up. I'm not necessarily worried about this bridge area here. I'm mainly worried about getting the points to line up because she has a very definitive point both on her nose and on her forehead. Now you unfold it, and here you have the new middle. And 
then there is our template for our mask. Ta-da! There, so you guys can see it straight your way. All right, and now you're just gonna take some scissors and cut that bad boy out, okay? So I am going to get ready for the next stage because we have our nice template here and I will be back in a moment. All right. All right. All right. Welcome back. So as you can see, we got our Warbla thermoplastics board so we don't burn anything because I've done that before. Don't do that. Do not mess with thermoplastics on the carpet. We have our template here. We're gonna put aside for a moment. We got our heat gun, we got some Sharpies over over in the corner over there, we got scissors, and we got our warbler right here. This is just a basic brown warbler. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to see how much, about how much we'll need. I think we'll just go ahead and get that entire piece. I need a Sharpie. Girl, all right. Okay, that will work. So you can do this with one piece of warbla. However, that's usually, it feels way too thin for me. So I like to do it with two. Stupid piece of warbler. Keeps rolling on me. Ha, there you go. I am so sorry, camera. There we go, okay. So, we got this piece of warbler, right? We're gonna just gonna chop it down the middle here. And then we're going to make sure that this mask fits on both pieces pretty well, which it do, it do. Yes, 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 yes. So this one, it's, okay. All right. Yes, okay, so both, it fits on both of them pretty well. I am so sorry that most of this crap is crooked for you guys. Uh, but at any rate, now what you're going to do is you're going to get your handy dandy heat gun. And I am actually going to overlap them like this. So that way the two thickest pieces are together. Okay. So we're gonna turn on the heat and heat that sucker up. You don't have to heat it up all the way but you wanna heat it up enough to where it sticks together. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. So the really cool thing that I like to do, and you don't always have to do this, but since I have a problem with um, the paper thing not sticking, I actually like to stick it on the warbler when it's still warm, because then it stays really nice. Uh, and if you're gentle with it, you can get it off pretty easily as well. So just kind of flatten that out. Don't press it down too hard or else it will stick stick, but just a nice gentle rubbing usually works. Uh, and then you can go ahead and let that cool. Um, 
while I go get the X-Acto knives, which I forgot about. Oof. So I mainly use um, the X-Acto knife for the ice because uh, I can get the other one with scissors. But if you prefer getting the outside with scissors, you totally can, or <laughs> sorry, X-Acto knives, you totally can. Um, basically you can use whatever cutting utensil you prefer. It does not matter one bit. I think I just broke that. It's okay though. It's okay. All right. So this, are we cool enough yet? No, we're stretching. Um, so one thing you do not want to do, because Warbla has a problem with stretching. Sorry, James. Warble has a problem with stretching if it's too hot and you do not want to do that. So like this corner here, for instance, let's zoom in on that. So see, it's like that. If you move it too much when it's still hot, it can stretch and then it, it hurts the integrity of the warbler which is one of the reasons why I prefer to double layer it because when it's double layered, you minimize the chance of it warping too much. Let's zoom you back out. There we go. Okay. So always wait until it's relatively cool and it is not. If you're brave at heart or if you're just impatient like I am, when it's kind of warm like this, it's a lot easier to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the eye holes. Now do not try pulling this out while it's still warm because then you'll get that stretching and warping that you do not want. Wait until it is cool. How are we doing? Oof, sticky. I didn't even think about how that glue would affect the mask, okay. Whoops. Oh, oh girl, you sticky. You sticky AF. Oh yeah, okay. Well, make sure your board is clean when you do this. Oh, our mask fell off. Oh well, that's okay. We can just line the eye holes back up. Am I right? Or am I right? And then you can just go ahead and clean up some of that. And now we are going to line this bad boy up if I can, you know, not rip it. Oh. So I'm going to reheat the warbler just a tad. So I can stick that puppy back on there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Hi, James. Hi, baby. Okay, so there are two ways that you can do this. Um, this next part, which is cutting out the mask. You could trace it around with Sharpie and then take the stencil off and cut it that way with an X-Acto knife or scissors. Or you could literally just pick it up and cut around the template with scissors, which is what I am actually going to do.
I am going to actually trace this bit in case this part falls off because I think it's going to, yup. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our mask. Okay, so what we're going to do next will require a mirror, so I'll be right back because I need to get the next step set up. Okay, so I have a mirror in front of me. I have um, my heat gun and my heat gun mat and my mask over here somewhere, which you can't see where I'm pointing at, but it's right beside me. Uh, so I will warn you, this next part is not for the faint of heart. Um, if you're worried about burning your face, do not use a heat gun and use a hair dryer and just do it very, very gently. Figure out where your tolerance is, figure out um, how much heat you need to put on the mask for it to get malleable. Just practice with maybe like scraps on your like wrist or something because if you are not careful, you can burn your face, okay? Like 100%, test it on your wrist, test it on your leg, work with a hair dryer first. Be careful, please. Please, please, please be careful. And um, if you have um, like one of, the, not these wig heads, like the styrofoam wig heads, you can use that too. It won't be exactly to your face shape, but if you're worried about burning your face, that's a, a very good alternative. Um, or you could do like a plaster mold of your face if you're extra, which I will be doing at some point. But anyway, going on with how I do this, what you're going to do is you're going to heat this thing up either with a heat gun or with um, a hair dryer if you want to do that practice and stuff, like I said, until it is malleable. Ooh, there's a hair on this. Get off. Are you not getting off? Okay, it's my dog's hair. It's whatever. It's fine. So we're going to heat this puppy up. See, it's very malleable. So again, be very, very careful. But what you're going to do is you're going to posi position it on your face where you want it. And starting at the bridge of your nose, mold it to your face, okay? Like so. That is not centered, there we go. Be very, very careful. If it starts to hurt too much, stop immediately and pull the mask away from your face, okay? And if it starts getting hard, hit it with the heat gun again. This is definitely just a trial and error type thing. Ooh, girl. Ooh, what happened to that? That is uneven as hell. Okay, so the problem I'm having is that one side isn't heated enough. So it's very, very important to try and get an even heat. Otherwise, you get a very, very uneven shape. And see, like you can see my cheeks are getting red now. So be very, 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 very careful, people. There we go. Hot, 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 hot. You know, it's times like this where I really, really wish I could just heat it on my face. But do not do that. <laughs> that is not healthy. Oh, those points are so uneven. Urgh. Okay, I'll redo that. I'll redo that in a moment. AKA currently. My face is so red. I 
keep heating up the wrong side. That's why it's opposite on my face. Duh. Ugh. That's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Mm, too hot. Too hot. Mm -mm. Hot, 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 hot. Oh, girl. I'm gonna have like third degree burns after this. Mm. I am not joking when I say be careful, guys. Not one bit, not at all. Be very, 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 very careful with this kind of stuff. It is not funny. You only get one face. Take care of it. Okay. So I'm just gonna pull my nose back and let this cool to my face. And try to fucking fix that. Ugh, look at how crooked that is. I will fix it in a minute. But overall, not bad, right? Not bad. That's an issue for me. And that. Which actually, while it's on my face, I'm gonna go ahead and try and fix this guy. I cannot move my eyebrows in the sink. Ta-da! One heat molded mask. So I think I'm going to fix the point first, and I think I'm going to use the X-Acto knife to do it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back after a few days of being very, very lazy. Now, I apologize in advance for my shadow. This was the best angle I could find to do this. Um, so yeah, apologies, but we've got our mask here. It is uncoated so far, and there's hair on my finger. And in a moment, we are actually going to prime this thing with some smooth on, which I will explain later. But first, I kind of want to smooth out these edges as much as possible. So I am going to sand it down a bit. Now I warn you, I am not familiar with sandpaper and which grit you should get. So I am using 80, grit sandpaper, which is really coarse. Um, I recommend doing your own research for that because I did not beforehand. We are good to go. You can see how it's nice and smooth now. There's a lot of ridges in this one. Well, it's not smooth smooth, but it's smoother than what it was. All right. Now I gotta get the, all the tape. So we're gonna set that aside, toss that sandpaper somewhere else. Now for the primer. Smooth on, which is these things right here, are actually um, made for 3D printing. They're supposed to be to fill in the pores of the filament after printing but you can use them for warbler, for foam, for almost anything, really. It's a protective liquid coating for 3D parts. Um, you just mix it and you brush it onto any surface. Uh, I'm actually going to Google some stuff first to make sure I'm actually doing this right, because it's been a hot minute. Oh shoot, tin foil. I forgot the tin foil. I'm so glad I looked at that video. Okay, so... What I am doing with the tin foil, which I will move so that y'all can see it, is making a sort of boat out of it. So make your tiny little boat out of two layers of aluminum foil. And then you're going to get a cup Um, they do it by 30 milliliters, so you put part A in for 20 milliliters and part B in for um, 10 millimeters. So it's a two to one ratio. How I have it is I measured it out on just a plain plastic cup. 
here's my line. So this is going to be part A and then this is going to be part B. So go ahead and fill that stuff up. So you need something that you can get sticky to mix it with. I have these clear toothpicks for cosplay that I never used. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and fill part A up. Oh, look at that. Right on top of the two thirds line. I'm amazing. Now we're gonna mix in part B. I actually don't know if you're supposed to shake it, but I'm shaking it anyway. And be careful getting this crap on you too. It's not great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mix this for a minute straight. Now we're just going to pour this mixture into the aluminum pan. Spread it out because the more you get it clumped together, the more likely it is to solidify quicker. And then you're just going to get some generic brush or um, these foam thingies that I have on the side here, which I will grab in a minute. So we got our mask. We've got our sheet of goo and we got our brushes. So what you're going to do is you, I, the new game plan to make sure that this doesn't <laughs> turn out lumpy is we're going to do one side first and then the other. So I'm going to start with this side, let it cure and then turn it over and do this side, let it cure and then I will most likely do the edges if I can't get to them later. So first things first, if I don't die from the fumes, just kind of don't get too much on there because you don't want it to run. And you just basically paint it on. And they say to continuously paint it to avoid drips and runs. But as long as you don't like overly coat your brush, you should be okay. stuff about the really awesome y'all just saw that happen um, another really annoying thing about this is that once something's touched it like this thing it turns as hard as a rock which is why I say do not use any brushes that you really want to keep just get something like this really cheap you can get a giant pack of them for like four or five bucks, I think. Um, but do not put this on anything you want to reuse because you cannot get it off. It is so ungodly sticky. I am telling you now, okay? Consider yourself warned. All right, so front side is curing. Hopefully we don't have any mishaps with it tilting over again like it did before. Uh, I'm going to leave it for three and a half hours, and then uh, if I'm up, I will probably do the backside tonight. If not, then I will see you guys again on Saturday, and we will do the backside together. Um, so yeah, enjoy. I'm going to make you sit here and watch this mask for three and a half hours. How does that sound for content? Such engaging content, right? I'm just kidding. I'm not that mean. Goodbye.
Alrighty, so we are back at it again. Uh, this is the mask after the first layer. Um, I went ahead and sanded the edges again so they're a bit smoother and what you can see here uh, was a bubble of glue that I sanded down as flat as possible. And then here's the back side, nice and shiny. Um, I'm going over it again because there's some spots that I missed and some spots that didn't get even, which really sucks, but it is what it is. So here we go again. Okay. I think that should do it for this second coat. So I am just gonna leave this to sit for another four hours. Woo! And I will see you guys in a moment. Okay, we are back. So a few little updates um, after, sorry about the birds. Uh, after the second glossing of this primer, I took a finer grit of sandpaper and went over the edges and smoothed up any um, nicks or scratches. And then this weird thing on the bridge of the nose. Um, I'm not going to bother with the third coat just because I feel like the paint is going to cover it pretty well. Uh, and speaking of paint, let's get right to it, shall we? So I'm back out here after about an hour. Now, as you can see, it is not the smoothest in the land. Actually, I can't even tell if you guys can see. There you go. It's got some nooks and crannies. Um, but I think it will do for now. I may decide to cover it with another layer of gloss, but we are going to do the other side while we are here. All right, so we are back. Um, so this is after the first spray paint. As you can see, I was unhappy with some of the bumps and grooves on it that were really noticeable. So I went through and sanded it again. Yay, sanding. For some reason, there was like very, very tiny amount on the, the right side. And there was this random hole that I don't know where it came from, but uh, you know, not everything's perfect. It's all right. Um, so I'm gonna give this another coat of black paint and hopefully uh, another coat after that will help even up all of these sandy parts. Otherwise, I'm going to have to find some way to even this out, maybe use another primer or something. But without further ado, let's get spray painting. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you with the details. It's kind of really hot out here. Um, but the mask did not dry evenly, so I'm going to put a layer of sealant over it. And then I'm going to do a layer of black paint and then a layer of sealant again just to see if it'll even it up. If not, who knows? We may start all over again with this one, but I would not be opposed to that, to be honest. It just means that this video would go up as how not to make a warm blow mask instead of how to make a warm blow mask. Alrighty, so as you can see, the clear coat actually did pretty well with evening this up a little bit. Um, there is still some areas that could have used more sanding, but I am actually pretty okay with it considering this is only my second warbler mask. Um, but for now, I'm actually going to do another coat of the black and then another clear coat just to try and make sure that, this is, that it is as even as possible. So that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, and we are back. We are losing daylight. Um, so I really wanna hurry up and get this finished. But it looks pretty good actually. There's only a, a few minor kerfuffles. My camera would focus, that'd be amazing. There we go, yeah. So there's only a few minor, minor kerfuffles here. Um, but I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. No mask is going to ever be perfect. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a clear coat and then I'm gonna wait till that dries and then I'll do a 
clear coat on the back. And we're back. Uh, so it is dark outside. I was correct. I didn't get back out there to do the uh, clear coats until we lost light. Um, but basically, I uh, after the first layer of clear coat dried, I flipped it around and did the backside. And here we have the finished product. Here's the front. There's the back. It's nice. There it is on. Um, obviously there are some things that I would totally do different uh, if I ever make this again, which I most likely will. Um, one of them being is that I'll probably try different methods for uh, priming and I will definitely get better at sanding because as you can see there are some places that I missed or didn't get smooth enough. but. Say la vie. Uh, this is my only second warble mask, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out in comparison to the black cat. Um, a really cool thing about this is that it can stay relatively well on your face without the use of spirit gum. I will, I do not recommend wearing it without some sort of attachment to a con though. But if you're just using it for like photo shoots where you can take the time to adjust it, um, you can also just take it off and not ruin your makeup. So these things are really great. Another thing I realized is that this particular mask is way darker than the fabric I chose to use. Well, but it actually doesn't show up. It actually doesn't show up too bad on camera. There's not like a noticeable difference, I don't think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Should I go fabric shopping again and use the mask as reference, or do you think? that this is pretty okay. Um, other than that, the uh, only things I have to say about this mask is, were, is that it was a learning experience and that it was very fun to make. <laughs> I hope you guys had a fantastic May and I hope you have an even more fantastic June. Bye cool cats.